I'm Joanne from Magpie's Cottage. I'm Amy. I don't remember how to do this anymore. Oh, we're back! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been since June since we visited you. It's really been a long time. Yeah, right before we went to ZK was the last one we did. No kidding. Yep, so that was the middle of June. Well, we're not going to show you all the FOs we've had since oh, then. Oh, no. No, I only have... The stuff I showed at the knitting last weekend. That's the stuff I have for FOs. And I grabbed a... Set I don't have any FOs along. Several works in progress I grabbed. I just grabbed three. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all I, I have three? Four, I think I brought four. Well, I mean, I have to admit, as I'm sitting there last night trying to pack my bag, because, you know, to plan for this, um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, what do I take? Because I mean, uh -huh. I have like six things in progress right now uh -huh. that I just need to get stuff off the needles. Right, right. And so what am I gonna do? Cast on something else, hello. Yeah. Oh, that's how I was last night. I was like, I need a plain vanilla sock. I just need one on the needles, you know? Sometimes you want that kind of mindless knitting. And for me, it's with little needles because little needles don't hurt my hands at all. My hands can't get uh -huh. sore. I've been working on projects that have size eight and nine needles. Oh yeah, that so hurts. yeah, my hands can yeah. get sore from that. Maybe even one of them's a ten. I didn't bring that one. It's a, a blanket on a size ten needle. I have my ranunculus. I think oh. I've got that. Oh on yeah, a nine. I just finished that. I don't oh, even know you where. finished it. <laughs> yeah, so that was on a size ten. Well, it's, it's finished, but not finished. Because it didn't tell you to go down a needle size for the bottom ribbing. Uh -huh. And I didn't, and it kind of flares out. Oh, I so think I'll I'm go down when I get there. Either I'm going to take out all the ribbing, or I'm just going to take off the bind off and do a regular bind off instead of a stretchy one. I kind of have this thing that, depending upon how long mine gets, I uh -huh. might do a split hem. Oh, okay. Do a split hem instead of just a uh, you know ribbing and uh -huh. bind off. I think a split hem would look kind of nice. Um, yeah. You know, at, with the drape of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, that's what I'm, I'm toying with that idea. Okay. We'll see how far I get with it. I don't know. Okay. Well, should I jump into my FOs that I brought then? Well, yeah, since well, I, I didn't don't have any. Bring them. I just left them here from the weekend. Yeah. Okay. Uh, First, this I finished just this weekend at the knit in, and that was a bankhead hat. <coughs> that is that is for, a great pattern. Yeah. It's. It's got twisted rib on the bottom, and then it's got this corrugated kind of rib in the top. It's hard to see because it's so great dark gray, but yeah, it's this just a great is pattern. Really stretchy, and Lexi's boyfriend, Lexi said he's got the biggest head. None of his hats will ever fit, so I made the extra large bank head. I'm sure this should fit. If it doesn't, that's it's a hopeless. problem. Yeah. Okay, that was number one. Number two, I, I finished a Musselberg. So I like the yarn. This is Regia Six Ply. Oh, I love the way that, like the, the, the pooling. Yeah, and I have another one that is the same yarn except for where this denim blue is, it's gray. Mm. So, and I just started that one. I didn't bring it, it's just the little top crown is all I have done. Okay, and being, uh, being the Six Ply, it's not so skinny. Right. So I use take this, freaking forever. This is size five needles wow. and 96 stitches. And so, but that yarn would be considered a sport or DK? Um, I think DK, I think it is supposed to be. Okay. Like six plays DK and eight plays. Well, five understood. would be about right. Yeah, about five would be um, a, a, a DK weight. Yeah, it was, me. it's a nice. It's a nice size for this yarn. Yeah. I thought it was a good match. I do too. Okay. I love this, the, the pooling. That's just fun. Yeah. And then this, this one so was a gifted cute. skein of this cotton yarn. And of course, so then I had to buy a skein. Of course. Yeah, of the purple to do the trim. Oh, I forgot to trim the sleeves. You know, they don't really need it. You I kind of like that little roll. I, I should, because they, they look kind of long to me. Do these look long? Yeah, they do. 
So maybe I'll just Unless put one. Unless this is like a little shrug kind of length. I don't know. Yeah, it is a little shrug. Well, then this Maybe I'll okay. just put a single row of single crochet on a round mug. Yeah, I would put bottom. something. Because you got to connect the sleeve to the body. Yeah. So anyway, I finished this. It didn't have a buttonhole. I added a button loop. Um, so it needs a button yet. So it's a nearly finished object, but I won't show it again. So there it is. Wow. It was called Ellie. Free pattern on Ravelry. Okay. And this pattern. was weird. It had you pearl <coughs> where the raglan were. Well, oh, really? Before you seamed it together. So it wanted you to have that dent there. Kind of cool. Yeah. So that was a little different. These the are, machine. These are Liz's mittens. I don't know if you can read them. Well, they have naughty so. words on them, just in yeah. case you want to know. So I made them, and then I took the thumbs out and redid them, because the thumbs, according to pattern, are way too wide. Oh. So I narrowed them down. You can see I left it here, but you can see right here where it narrowed in. Oh, sure. Right here, I narrowed it in. And I did a different kind of top. I decreased every other row on the top instead of every row. So it's so you not get a little so bit, pointy. It yeah. kind of matches the top then. Yeah. I would okay. think every row would be rather steep. Yeah, it was real fast. And the whole end of the thumb was so big. Okay. Now this is another one needs buttons. This one I did remember to finish the sleeves. This is for my granddaughter is expecting. She's gonna be a great grandma. Yes, I am. So this is old, old yarn I found. This sweater I found in my stash of yarn, all made except for one sleeve that had to be finished and it needed this trim. That's crazy. And I know it's been in there for seven years. Oh, wow. Eight, How do you know? Eight years. Because um, Kylie's eight, and I made her a sweater with this yarn and gave it to her. And then I had a lot of leftovers, so I was going to make a second one. But I think I ran out, or knew I'd run out, and that's why I stopped. But I just added this little blue, the navy. That works. I think it looks fine with that navy. Yeah. On top, it looks good. So, bonus sweater there. All this cute baby stuff. Yep. And then here's my ranunculus. <clears throat> but like I said, I'm going to... Oh, it's got wrinkled in there. I'm going to probably... Yeah, I can see why you went do that. Rip out the hem. Either I'm going to just change the cast on or I'm going to take out all the ribbing. One or the other. I haven't decided yet. So ranunculus. Out of summer silk from Barocco. Mm. It's a discontinued yarn. But... Yeah, I could I, I think, could probably change the bind off and it would suck it all in. I would do that. So I might just take that out and try a little bit. Yeah. See how it looks before I rip everything out. Okay. That's all wow. my FOs. She's so, got a lot. She's been busy. Me, I just is, didn't bring them along. This is all just in the last two weeks I finished all this. Oh jeez. See, I had a lot of whips, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a seven-year right whip. <laughs> seven-year whip. This, these gloves, I, I mean the mittens I was making for a long time. The ranunculus was a knit-along, and this was the sixth week. This was my car. Yeah. This one was my car knitting. Okay. And this one did take less than a week. I worked on it only while I was here. It was a knit-in project mostly. When the knit-in started, I just had the ribbing on the bottom almost done. Yeah. And then by the end of the... Uh, you just kept end, going on it. Yeah, I just kept doing yeah. this one. <clears throat> so that's my FOs. So if you want to talk about your whips, then I'll talk about mine. Well, I only brought three. Okay. But I'll, since we were talking ranunculus, that's what's in here. Okay. Okay. Do I love the way this is working out? Yes. I'm not sure it's going to fit me, but here it is. See, now it I'm doing the mohair with the fingering weight held double. And mm -hmm. I love, love the way this yarn is, the variegated heart. 
Okay, this is what I really have. Here's the ball of, that's the, what's left of ball one. Oh, okay. You know, so I can uh -huh. knit for a while on this thing. Is that so an 80-20? Looks like it, a two-ply. It's a, it's, 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 come on, Yarn Van, where are you? No, it's not, it's not in here. Oh, this is that. Um, oh, goodness gracious. Fab, fab, Fabulous fibers. Yeah, this is Cheshire Cat, the Wonderland. Oh, okay. That Wonderland. Okay. And, okay, I have loved, this yarn's been in the shop for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I have loved this color, but I never knew what it wanted to be. Mm -hmm. So you have these two skeins and I happen to have all of this. It's Shulana Kidsita. And I got a lot of it. It was on a closeout. I saw it and it was, I literally paid five bucks a ball. So mm -hmm. when you get the Kidsita for five bucks a ball, you buy a bunch. Yeah. And they look great together. They do. I mean, yeah. So, and this is, you know, there's nothing to this. I can pair this with all kinds of stuff. Oh, for sure. So I got a lot of it. So uh -huh. if I've got, this is ball one. I've got, that's ball two. Um, I have, I don't know how much more I'm gonna knit on the body. I mean, I don't know. The sweater itself is cropped. Right, and I think- But I'm not a cropped kind of girl. Right, I, I don't see you in dresses much. And no. that's usually what the crop ones are on. Well, yeah, like, I, well, like, like well, like these jeans that I got on right now, they're high waisted, but mm -hmm. I don't see myself wearing cropped and high waisted jeans either. Yeah. So I just, that's not me. Mm -hmm. So what I think I'm going to do, I was thinking I wanted three quarter length sleeves mm -hmm. and I was going to do just like a, I'll leave them wide so that I get like the, the, the tulip or the bell and then just do an I cord. Okay. Decrease a bunch right away uh -huh. and then do an I cord. Okay. So that it comes to about here mm -hmm. with an I cord and that's it. No ribbing. Okay. Um, and so my thought was as soon as I finish up this ball, then I'm going to do those sleeves that way. With this. With start that. Them with this. Yeah, start now, with that. Now, these are, if it's the Wonderland, it's. 500. Yeah, it's four ounces, not a hundred grams, so that's more. Yeah, so I've got between the two balls, I've got a thousand yards. Mm -hmm. So even with even at the big gauge that this is knit at, mm -hmm. and actually I'm a little bit tighter than what the um, pattern calls for, and I'm okay with that. I, I'm glad mm -hmm. I did that. Um, and then, so I'm thinking, if I do the split hem, mm -hmm. so they'll come down straight. And then the split hem with that, those kinds of sleeves, I think it'd be kind of a cool look. Yeah. Yep. So then I'm just going to knit till I, you know, either A, it's uh, low hip length, mm -hmm. or B, I run out of yarn, whichever comes first. Right. So that's kind of what I'm going to do with it. Mm -hmm. Now, do I want this done tomorrow or the next day? No. Okay. I'm, well, because. Because I mean, that'll be deep winter, because with that mohair, that'll be really warm. It will. Yep. And and because of the way this is, you know, this loose gauge, I would probably wear a cami underneath it or something. So, oh, yeah. So I'm not going to... Some kind of top. I'm some, th right. Something underneath. Probably a cami. Right. So that's my ranunculus. And, you know, I mean, we were doing it for the knit along. And mm, I'll get it done. Yeah. But now this is pretty much mindless. Yeah. You know, especially once I get those sleeves done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's pretty much mindless the rest yeah. of the way. So, I yeah. pretty much once we I divided for the sleeves, I threw the directions on the side. You know, then every sweater seems the same to me after you divide for sleeves. Exactly, I agree. Yeah. So, so that's where I'm at with it, and we'll see. Okay. So I I I, I like it. I'm very happy with the way it's turning out. Cool. I'm just not being very speedy with it. Sure. Cause I got other crap on the needles. Right, right. I was um, monogamous with mine here at the shop. You know, right. I don't carry mine back and forth, but that's the only thing I worked at um, at the shop for this, well, five weeks. <coughs> my 
Yeah, and see, I, I, when you have designers who you consider them good friends uh -huh. and you like the kinds of things that they design, when they send you an email or a text and say, hey, want to uh -huh. test this? Yeah. I'm an idiot because I don't know the word no. Uh-huh. So, Stephanie introed it Monday, I believe. I saw it on Ravelry today. Yes. I was the admiring spiders. it. The spiders. Okay. Venomous, I think Venomous, it's called. Venomous, yes. Okay, so. Yeah, that's cute. I, I saw it a month ago already. Uh-huh. And um, I told her then when I saw it, I said, Steph, I got to do that. Uh-huh. So then... Earlier this month, got the email. Shoot, I don't have time for this damn thing right now. But uh -huh. I did it anyways. Yeah. So mine is red with black spiders. Uh, that's going to be great. I love it. So tonight, it will be off the needles tonight. I didn't bring along because it's close to being done. You'll see the FO next, to, next time we podcast because I'm going to wear it. Okay. okay? Um, and then... Um, but it's red with black spiders and I freaking love it. Good. I just love it. It it's is just, so cute. Yeah. I'm down to it's the cute. twisted rib. Okay. I have eight rows of twisted rib in the bind off. And so, yeah, it'll be off the needles tonight. Between that and that skeleton hat of hers. I know. So cute this oh. season. Oh, that was adorable I know. too. Yeah. I, I, I. I love that hat. Yeah. I don't, I, because I have to go stand outside when I'm subbing, I have to go stand outside with kids after school usually. Um, and I have, of course, if I have recess duty. So I like to always have fun hats uh -huh. because that would be the only time. I mean, if I'm like going, you know, like from home to here in the winter or whatever, I never put a hat on my head. Mm -hmm. I'm not a hat person. Right. I don't like hats. It flattens right. my hair. But when I'm connected, when I'm at school and you're standing out there for a while, you need a hat on your head. Yeah. So um, I've knit them. I knit them and I can change hats every month uh -huh. I, or every couple of weeks or whatever. I do it all the time. Yeah. So the knitting that one, it's it's fingering weight. Um, well, I was just going to ask if you knew what weight it was. Yeah, it's fingering weight. Um, and I'm quite certain I could scrounge up the right colors of yarn in my stash. And have uh -huh. this hat off the needles in a matter of hours. Yeah. Well, days probably, you know, a day or two. The trouble is, I just don't really have time to do it right now. Yeah. Because I have do, a Do you think that kids could wear that year-round? Or would you say that's only Halloween with us? Oh, I don't know. I think a kid would wear it year-round, but I wouldn't put it on a kid to keep them warm in winter because it's not, okay. you know, being fingering weight. Not good for me to give my grandson then for Christmas. I just think it's adorable though. But what I did see online were some x-ray mittens, they're called. I want to make those, I think, for him. That would it's be fun. It's just, you know, I, when I made those other mittens, Liz's, yeah. I did the catch floats every time. And I don't think it worked out as smooth as it could. And you kind of, I don't know, I wasn't happy with the way they looked with the catch floats every time. and you But you don't want to leave floats big in the mittens. What kind of yarn did you use on them? Just fingering this. Is it super wash? Yeah. That's why. I have learned the hard way. When you are doing color work, especially fingering weight, I do not use super wash. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I don't say that that's not a hard and fast rule. I try not to. Um, the, you know, the cowl that I'm working on, it's all color work too. And mm -hmm. I find that I get more puckers. I get floats that just float too much. Um, mm -hmm. When I'm using superwash, when I do not use a superwash, I do not have that problem. The toothiness of the yarn connects to each other and the stitches stay put. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, if I wasn't using superwash, I probably wouldn't worry about catching floats either. Right. 
So I would just but I dealt to the themselves on the inside. Right. And so I am becoming I, I used to never not use superwash. But I am becoming mm -hmm. a lover of non superwash yarn. Okay. I mean I, I I'm finding that doing that it changes the whole finished object. Oh. And so for um that hat I'm thinking I got black, I got white, mm -hmm. and I have another color in some very toothy woolly wool, you know, maybe mm -hmm. some Jameson. I'm sure I got it in stash at home. Yeah. I mean, don't take much. Mm -hmm. Probably a ball or two. But Luke, I can't do non super wash. No, you can't for them. He is really sensitive. He wouldn't even wear a Cascade 220 super wash. It was too prickly for him. Well, just give him acrylic. That's what I've gone to. He only And you know acrylic. what though? An acrylic yarn in a fingering weight color work kind of thing. I think because acrylic stays put too. Acrylic doesn't bloom. Mm -hmm. And I think the acrylic would work very nicely. I just don't like the catching floats every time thing. No, I wouldn't. I don't think you need to with acrylic. For a mitten? I'm worried with mittens that you need to. Line them with some flannel. Yeah. How, I, how, I mean, really, how tough would it be to make a, mi mm -hmm. a mitten lining a flannel? I mean, mm -hmm. just flannel. Yeah. I mean, fleece, you got to plan for lots of space. But mm -hmm. flannel, no. Just make a, and they'll be nice and soft on the inside. And quite honestly, if you, mm -hmm. if you lined his mittens with flannel, you could use any wool you wanted mm -hmm. because it wouldn't be on the inside. Yeah. And I just think, well, you know what? I, I have an aunt who gave up knitting. And now she's, you know, that's my whole family tree of knitters. Mm -hmm. And she's certainly, and she's a beautiful knitter. And she gave it up because she is allergic to wool. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a way to deal with that. And, but then she, you know, she said, I can handle knitting small things for small periods of time. So mm -hmm. that would be a way to do that. But she could knit acrylic if she mm -hmm. really wanted to. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just like me when I knit that uh, mohair. I hit, what did I make? Something. During the pandemic anyway. But I realized if I wear a mask, I can do the mohair for a while. You know, it doesn't really bother my hands too much. Just wear a mask and I'm okay makes sense to probably me. For an hour I, I, I just think that Luke would probably, no matter what yarn you used, would still, since he's sensitive to that itchiness, um, mm -hmm. like his mittens lined with flannel. And, mm -hmm. and a flannel mitten would be nothing to line. Yeah. You probably got a, a few pieces of flannel that would make nice lining. Baby flannel I have. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll see. I haven't decided. I'm not going to put a lot of effort into it. Because, no. you know, they lose them. <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah. So, anyway, so I was talking about this whole friend calling you testing thing. Yes. So, this, um, I can talk about, I, because there have been sneak peeks on it on Instagram. So, this is coming out, I don't know if it's this, it's it's a Rhinebeck intro. Oh, okay. For From Lisa Ross. So, it's kind of fun. It's just a shawl. But here, you've got, you bind off to make the holes and then cast on. And so, okay. that's all you're doing. It's pretty much mindless other than that. Okay. But I will say Color getting... switching. Yeah. Yeah. You just, it's it's a set of minis. And then um, two full skeins. Of, of the navy. Of the navy. And then, so now I'm on the long, in the middle st um, garter part. And then when you get to the other end, the sections are going to have the mini colors, the contrasts, um, as the around the holes. Oh. So okay. where this where this navy is here, yep. Between my colors, that'll switch, and I'll have navy between, and the contrast colors. Okay. We'll make that. So, I, I I mean it's fun. Yeah. And I I I had you know this is all just stash yarn. Is it uh, asymmetrical or is it going to narrow up again? Asymmetrical. Okay. 
asymmetrical. That seems to be one of my favorite shapes. I find that to be so wearable. Okay. So this is, yeah, this was my other test knit. So there I was okay. sitting. Oh no, two tests. Yeah. Idiot. Yeah. But the good news is I did tell Lisa because this one came out when I was on vacation at the end of September. And so I did say, Lisa, I'm not even near my stash. And I said, so I know I, it was like the Monday of our trip. And mm -hmm. I said, um, I'm not even near my stash and I won't be near my stash for a week. And so, um, and she says, no, no worries. I just need your numbers, you know, mm -hmm. from yardage and whatever. So that's okay. what, those are my main projects right now. I have a sock, oh, the car knitting kind of sock. Mm -hmm. I, actually, it's my bowling knitting. It's so funny. Oh, you bowl between frames? I knit between frames. I'm, yeah. That, I, mean, <coughs> I can't talk I bowl. today. Yeah. Bowl well, Tuesday nights, mm -hmm. and I literally take a mindless sock, okay. and I knit between frames at the bowling alley. Oh. So I have my mindless sock. I think I'm eight rows from the toe decreases on the second sock. Okay. So there is this person inside me saying, you know, Amy, this could be finished object tonight. I will finish that cowl. I will finish that sock. I will get my swatch ready for... Um, tomorrow's cast on, um, mm -hmm. and I'll have some fin FOs for the month. I literally do not have any FOs for the month of October so far, okay. and it's because everything has been started and nothing's mm -hmm. finished. I haven't started my gnome for the month. I have a shawl that is my monthly knit along for uh, my Laura Ayler group. That's about a third finished you know so it started but mm -hmm. it's like all these things are started mm -hmm. and I just need to finish them yeah. and so I I have to I, I, I said to said to myself I said you know Amy you could start everything that you want to start this month and if I start it all that it's all started then it's just a matter of finishing them yep so we'll see I don't know I don't okay. know I've got a lot to do yeah so this is, you've seen this before though. You had a green one here and showed it, yeah. I remember that. So this is the blue one. This is the red one. And I have a yellow and I have an orange and a purple one at home already mm -hmm. too. So these are my squares for the Stitch and Time Blanket, which is a class that I'm doing next week, no. Next week is design your own sweater. Yeah. Doing it the 26th. It's on the website. It's All on the website. All classes are on the website. It's coming up soon. Yes. So it's it called is. a stitch in time blanket. So what we're going to do is we're making the equivalent of like um, a log cabin quilt, if you think that way. And so these are two of the squares. So the, the stitch in time blanket class has two sessions. The first session teaches you how to do this. The second session will teach you how to put them together. And we will, so um, my blanket is gonna be 12 squares when I get it that far. Right now, I think I only have six done, but I've been busy with other things and I really just need to get back to it. Um, but I love this. It's This is great car knitting. So actually what I think I'm gonna do when I finish my bowling sock and that's mm -hmm. what I call it, my bowling sock. Um, when I finish that, I'm going to take this. Oh, okay. And then I will I can work on my squares. Mm -hmm. I mean, I this is mindless. Right. Once you know how to do it, the squares themselves are mindless. Yeah. And I, I took all of my scraps and I sorted them by color. And so I just take a bag. And if my ball is smaller, I, do, I only save grams, four grams. Okay. Because it's one square. One little section okay. is four grams. Okay. So what do um, you do with them if they're three? Do you throw them out? No. Oh, okay. Sure. I make a magic cake out of it. Okay. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with these magic cakes, but I kind of kind of think I do. Um, I want to take the magic cakes and marl it and hold it double with a neutral uh -huh. and just let the whole thing be marled. Okay. And I have a pattern that um, it's 
starts out knitting on the bias until you get to a certain width. And then you do a long straight section. And then you decrease on the second half to make the triangle on the end. So it squares it off. Okay. I don't know, it's, it's just, okay. I, I've been, and it's yeah. garter with an I-cord edge, I think. I've done two that I've done that marled with a natural yarn, but I did them in granny stripe crochet. Yeah, well, and I don't like to crochet, so yeah. I'm knitting it. Yep. And I don't, I don't really care about leftovers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not one. I don't save every scrap of yarn. I, I don't. Do. Um, but now that I have a use for it, mm -hmm. I just throw it all in a bucket, you know, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. what happens. So, yep. Yeah. So these are two of them. We brought the, I brought them in so that they were in the shop so that if somebody wanted to come in and look at this, Right. Think you know they 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 were here, and people can look at them. I mean they're mm -hmm. not blocked. Their their ends are hanging. The ends mm -hmm. are woven in. Um, except I, this there's a couple on the edge that aren't, but those won't get woven in until we put we connect them. But um, they're not blocked. But the but most of the ends are in. I think there's and two. And you don't trim until you blocked. Right, and I don't trim until I block. So that's why they're hanging here. Okay. So that, so that's what I've been doing. Okay. Um, I have a couple things I wanted to say about the classes. We've got the design your own sweater coming up and mm -hmm. what that class is. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, I have always wanted to plan out a sweater based on a yarn that I get a certain gauge on and Ann Bud's books really do that. Now, I'm mm -hmm. thinking that it's really an adventure in sweater construction. Mm -hmm. I know that you can, and I've seen you do it. You'll just, oh, I think I'm gonna knit this sweater and I'm gonna use this yarn and I'm gonna do this kind of, you know, raglan and blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. You've done this, I've watched you. And that's mm -hmm. great and I can do that too. Mm -hmm. I have no concerns that I couldn't do that. Right. But I think that there are people out there that, oh, wow, that sounds insane. How would I go mm -hmm. about doing that? Hence yeah. the class. Yep. So what else do we got going? We've got some mitten things going on. We've yeah. got some hat things going on. Mm -hmm. We've got, you know, so there's a lot of different stuff um, yeah. out there in the class list. Yeah. Plus we have the knit-alongs. We've that I mm -hmm. mentioned the knit-along that I'm casting on tomorrow. I'm casting on tomorrow mm -hmm. because that's the first day of the knit-along. Is that sweater going to get done anytime soon? Nah. That knit-along is going to go all the way till the end of the year. Well, I might get it done so, in that time period. Because it's a guard again, I figure we'll give people plenty of time. Plus, yeah. you get busy with the holidays. Well, that's so, true. Yeah. And, and it's not as loose of a gauge as the ranunculus one is. I mean, ranunculus mm -hmm. is a quick knit. Yeah. But it this one is on size 8 needles, so it, it'll go quick, too. Well, so I might use an eight. That yeah. sounds really big for me. Okay. I might have to go to a seven. Well, I have my start here. I'll show you. Oh, good. So. Your this, timber? Yeah. She's cheating. I, I'm I am, just going to say I said it. I was going to cheat because, well, I'll talk about it when I get there. Okay. So I just wanted to show quick. I got my Delicue bag. That I love that. We started that. carrying Delicue. Well, the wax canvas bags um they're called the maker bags they all come with these pins with stitch markers on them and they all have yarn cutters and yarn guides they're gorgeous in the bag in, yeah built in the bag and th this brass hardware i mean this came with a shoulder strap too and i'm using this as my purse slash project bag all my purse stuff is in the bottom or the little pockets and then i've got big old pot project bags fit in there and only take up half the bag yet i mean it's so big so there's all different styles online just go look and i'm you know we're just starting so i keep reordering 
so we'll build up a stack so this first one oh i didn't bring any patterns because i've been using ravelry so it's hard to show people but it's called woodland loafers oh i've made and them I, yeah i started the sole this is for size 12 and a half so it's pretty big big feet yeah so here's the bottom um and i started the decreases you can see it going in a little over here um what's this yarn called again i was just wondering it was that that's really thick stuff that was over here on the back i forgot what it's called well it's a chain ply whatever it is yeah it's really thick the woodland loafers pattern says to use a chunky yarn and this one's really thick probably too thick for what they meant but you can, I mean, look at it when I stretch it, how thin it gets. It's kind of one of those really airy yarns. Mm -hmm. So you can squish it and work it on a smaller needle. So I'm doing okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's working out. So are these somebody's oh, Christmas present? Yep. Usha. Ushya. U-S-H-Y-A from Mirasol. Hmm. Certainly nice and soft. Yeah. Very nice. It's 98% merino, 2% polyamide. Cool. So mostly merino. They will felt a little if you Yeah, that in woodland the loafers pa um, pattern is nice. It's a nice zip. It makes uh, nice little, like, yeah. like, like a, a good slipper. Yeah. And I like the idea it has a little loop on the heel. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Okay. Let's see. What else do I have here? It's got like six bags over here. It's yeah. Crazy. I just went in by my chair and I've been working on all kinds of projects and I still left three behind. And I think I got a lot on the needles. Oh, this was last night. I just started that little sock I told you about. I did uh, one by one rib, but every fourth row I purled. And this is the yarn from Haynes House. Hmm. H-A-Y-N-E-S. We got it free in our ZK goodie bags. Oh, and that's the same stuff I used on Liz's mittens. So this is the leftover. It was next to me on my chair last night when I decided I need vanilla socks. <laughs> I really need plain <laughs> footed socks. So you know what? I Three years ago, I decided I need to order shoes a half size bigger mm -hmm. for my socks. When I ordered my shoes this year, I forgot to get the half size bigger. I was like, oh my goodness. You know, after Can't win. getting sandals in size eight, then I forgot to get eight and a half for winter. Oh, well. This is my blanket, I think. This is my blanket. And it's all my little scraps. And on this one, I decided to start out at the bottom with two pinks. And then whatever... Whatever ball is left, you know, when I run out of yarns, I'll just match to that ball. So it'll kind of fade, if you will, as it goes. So right now I got two different kinds of teal. So it's just yeah. ribbed. No, it's brioche. Oh, it's, it's all brioche. brioche. So it is squishy. It is really, the squish factor is phenomenal. Yes, it is. It's really, it's nice and thick. Yeah. And I really like the way those colors are working out. I do too. It's kind of fun. I think I might know that was just at Knitted and I showed it once before. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this. No? Oh, maybe it was one of the Knitted's you weren't here. Could be. Because I think you missed two throughout the summer. You missed the September one. And yeah. And... I think there was another one. Yeah, I'll just plain brioche. Like it would be like one color brioche, but I'm actually marling two together. The two I have right now are these. So when I finish this ball, I'll probably still have some of this left. So I'll just pick a color in there that something matches. And yeah, that's all I'm doing, kind of making a fade. <laughs> Well, that's an interesting way to make a fade. Yeah. Very clever. Yep. I like it a lot. I was going to make it a baby. So is that an at-home project mostly? Yeah. These are all at-home projects, except where the timber is going to stay here now. 
because now I, I have it figured out what I'm going to do. Okay. Okay. Let me just get this. Oh, what I'm wearing, by the way, is my soundtrack. I've worn it lots of times. This is the timber we're going to do for our knit along. You can look on Ravelry, but that's the sweater. Yeah, so it's a cardigan. And you see how it's very open? I don't want mine that open, so I'm putting increases right here to close up that openness. And then I'm going to go back and do an apply to eye cord and put a zipper in when I'm done. Of course, I can't make it just like the pattern says. So this is as far as I've gotten. I love this tweed. This, this is just Encore, Encore tweed. So if you want to see now here, wow. you can see how this, my band is angling inward where the pattern, it would go straight down. I'm adding on this edge right here the edge of the ribbing, I'm adding every fourth row I make one. Okay. And I just wanted to do that up before we start. I'm going to do at least eight. I don't know if I'm going to keep going after eight of them. Okay. We'll see. see. We'll see what my measurements are. Probably I'll stop there at eight. Yeah, and I was going to do the eye cord as you go, mm -hmm. but it didn't look the same on both sides. Okay. It just didn't. I, I don't know why. Maybe because on one side... So you're adding I-cord? I was going to. I initially cast on six extra stitches so I could slip the last three of every okay. row. But on one side, when you turn around the first stitch you do, or when you put the two, knit the two together, it's purled. And on the other one, it was knit. And so then the I-cords ended up looking different. Right. It didn't work. So I just took it off and I'll add it on. It'll be really easy to add on because you slipped the first oh, one. right. And so yeah, it'll be really easy to pick up. Yeah. But I love this yarn. Encore Worsted Tweed. It looks gorgeous. It does. I get I exactly spot on gauge with a size eight needle. Okay. I love these little ribs in the back. So that's gonna add a little shaping. So very I'm very nice. happy with it. Now this project will stay here at the shop. The other ones I'll I'll take back home. Who's that for? You. This is this is for me, but not till next year probably. I'll leave it hanging in the shop for a year. Okay. Um so I made it a size smaller. I uh I'm on a weight loss journey here. So yeah, I've been going to Weight Watchers. So far, I lost 32 pounds and I fully intend on keep going. So this is being made two sizes smaller than I normally would make it. So there's the goal. Yep. So by next fall, I want to be wearing this. Wow. Yep. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm going to do that with all the sweaters I make going forward. Because I always like to hang them in the shop for yeah. at least six weeks before I wear them. And so if I make them all a size or two smaller. That's a good idea. Then then they should work. Very cool. Yeah. So, yep. That's all I have on my needles that I brought with. As if it's, you know, not enough. I still have Lexi's <coughs> baby blanket out of chunky cotton on the needles and I have my still my color work sweater that I'm gonna steak. <laughs> that one got put on hold because of my hand surgery and my hand trouble. And then I started working on it again through the summer and then it got to be August and I said, Oh, time to switch to Christmas knitting. So it got put on hold again. So right now I'm focusing on baby and Christmas other than the shop knit alongs. Hmm. I don't know that I'm knitting anything for anybody for Christmas and I don't mm. have any babies coming. So yeah, I did a baby sweater in summer for my niece's little guy, but I haven't even mm -hmm. sent that off to her yet. <laughs> oh my. I should do that. Oh well. Yeah. So I, uh, 
I made my New Year's resolution already for knitting. Oh, good Lord. 2023 is going to be the year of self, uh, selfish knitting. I'm going to only knit for me or the baby. Because baby knits take no time. But I'm not going to make people hand knits for Christmas. None of that. So that's okay. my, my goal for 2023. Well, I, I, I mean, the... Uh socks that are almost finished it's kind of funny got a little overzealous as i was working my way down the foot you know mm -hmm. the, and it has a like a wider cuff the mm -hmm. pattern called for that and i did the leg the way i normally would do the leg but because of the wider cuff the leg ended up being longer than normal mm -hmm. so then for some reason when i was knitting the first foot I just kept going and I didn't pay attention to how long my foot was getting. Oh. All of a sudden I look at it and go, holy buckets, that's really long. So then uh -huh. I finished it and I put it on and I go, well, that ain't my foot. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I tried it on Ryan. Oh, okay. It fits him perfectly. Oh, and he's been bugging you for socks. Well, Packer socks. Oh, I thought he just wanted socks. No, Packer socks. Okay. Because I knit him a pair of Packer socks and... He didn't realize you can fix knitting, mm -hmm. you know, and he ripped his sock and got a hole in it and the hole, you know, ran like it would and I could have fixed it, but mm -hmm. he felt guilty. So then mm -hmm. he didn't tell me. Oh, and he threw him out? Yeah. Well, it got to the point where it wasn't fixable anymore. Oh, okay. And so, yes, they did get thrown out, but I just said, Ryan, I can fix that. Oh. So, I have the yarn all caked up, ready to go, the Packer color, and I'm going to just finish this sock, and he's going to get both of them. Okay. The Packer ones when I get around to them, but yeah. they, these will be for Ryan. Okay. And uh, yeah. I, was, I was a little bit concerned I wasn't going to have enough yarn mm -hmm. to make the two socks the same. So, then I thought, well, if I have to, I can take out the toe and finish mm -hmm. off the toe in a gray, you know, mm -hmm. and then use whatever was that I take out from the first toe mm -hmm. to finish up the leg on the second one. Um, but it looks like I'm gonna have enough to finish up the toe. And if I'm doing the toe and I'm just a, almost to the end and I, I'll just throw some freaking gray on it, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Cause the yarn is a, it's a gray and white variegated, but then it's got red and blue speckles. Oh, okay. It's really, it's, it's, different yarn that's for sure mm -hmm. um but it i'm doing and oh and the other thing is it's the pattern is hermione's everyday socks i love that pattern i love that pattern mm -hmm. so now i'm thinking is the 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 four row repeat it's no brains um mm -hmm. and it's so easy to do and it <coughs> creates mm -hmm. such a nice look especially with a variegated yarn i think i'm gonna just start knitting them all the time because it the, the the heel is great, the um, gusset and the way the, the way the gusset and everything is done, um, and the flap, love it. Mm -hmm. If anybody ever asks me my favorite sock, I always say my favorite sock to wear is my Hermione's everyday sock made with opal yarn. That's <sighs> my perfect combination of sock. I can see why. I I mean this yarn. Um, it's not, it's, it's, it's a hand paint savvy sock. I think it's called. Okay. Um, and I love the name of the color and that's why I bought it because the, the color name is where the sidewalk ends. Oh, okay. As an, a nod to Shel Silverstein, who is a poet who, um, wrote great poetry for kids. It's all funny okay. stuff, all funny, goofy stuff mm -hmm. that kids would like. And so when I was teaching my poetry unit at school with my fourth graders, always included mm -hmm. Shel Silverstein. And Where the Sidewalk Ends is probably um, one of his most famous books. The other one was A Light in the, in the Attic. Those are the two I used quite a bit, but mm -hmm. he's um, just a funny, funny guy. Um, and kids love him. So that's why I bought this yarn, because okay. I love the name. Okay. I buy the, I buy. Yarn for color names all the time. Oh. Kind of a weird thing I do, but yeah, yeah if I'm in love with the name. Uh-huh. 
So, okay. yeah. So, but it, they're very neutral looking and they, they fit Ryan perfectly. Came to me because he was over and he tried him out. I go, oh, mm -hmm. cool. Because I, you know, I could have ripped out the toe and mm -hmm. like it, at least two there. repeats. Yeah. I think, no, I'd have to pull out, I think I figured I'd have to pull out four repeats. They were that long. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was like an inch and a, inch and a half long. Mm -hmm. I'm going, what the heck, Amy? But yeah, it was just dumb. But okay. I I know why it happened. I, I, I was on vacation on the cruise okay. when I was knitting them and not having my sock ruler along uh -huh. or any of that. I just threw the socks in the yarn in the bag yeah. and I didn't need a brain, mm -hmm. you know, because it's pretty much brainless knitting. And so I didn't have my sock ruler. And if I had my sock ruler, I would have been paying attention. Mm-hmm. It's what it is. Yeah. So, so at any so rate. So, with my shoe dilemma, I think my thing is now I have to only make smooth feet. So, no matter what the sock pattern is, it's ending at my heel. It's okay. Until <laughs> I get my shoes broken and I'll stretch out and then I wear the other ones again. <laughs> oh, I can't believe. And I did order two pairs, not just one. I ordered brown and black. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I got a screaming deal. It was Easy Spirits. And on their website, they had like $25 off if you spent $75. But my shoes were only $69. $69 for one pair. And so I thought, well, I'll just buy a cheap pair of something else. I didn't find anything I like. So I did two pair of the same ones. But then it was over $125. So then you got $50 off. Oh. I was like, wow. And usually when I check out with them, I always just um, check out through PayPal. Well, I decided this time to log in and register. Mm -hmm. So then they gave me a 20% off coupon in my email. Well, there you go. And I had to go in the email anyway to verify. So I saw it right away. And so I took 20% off. My whole thing cost $70 and a few cents. Basically a pair free. Yeah. So it was a really good deal. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they're on their way. They already shipped. So Cool. Mm hmm Well, that's nice when it works out well. Yeah. Yep. It is. Okay. Um, well. Okay. Is that it? I think so. We talked about classes. We talked. It's ladies' night out on Thursday. We got it. We could say, um, I don't know, the 20th. If people want to come to Sheboygan Falls, ladies' night out. Oh, um, and you were going to talk two rooms left? There's two rooms left on the retreat, but there were two people in here today saying they they wanted them. So there might be no rooms left. You can wow. check the website. As soon as I sell those last two rooms, I'll, I'll take down all the available rooms and I'll just put up a wait list. Sounds great. So, but I mean, yeah, yeah, so the retreat's almost full. And Feels good to be more normal. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So I don't think there's any other announcements. I didn't draw for the ranunculus knit along yet because today is the last day. So you still have time to go on Ravelry and put in your project. Ooh. I'll draw tomorrow or sometime before next week. I don't week. know if mine's in there. The people that were here in person didn't have to okay. go in Ravelry. You have your choice because you're on the sign up sheet, I think, that yeah, I passed I around. Yeah, yeah, since you were here in person, you don't have to be. I just take the people from Ravelry, I add them on that sign-up sheet. Oh, that's And nice. then do random number generators. So it's all one list. When I'm done, it's all combined. Well, that's good. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So no prizes to award this week. Well, it, it, it was nice coming back to this. Yeah. And we'll just have to figure out a schedule that, that works, you know? Mm-hmm. That's kind of what our problem was. You know, mm -hmm. I I've been bumming and traveling and then and Joanne's schedule's changed a little bit. And so it's like, well, when the heck are we gonna do this? Mm -hmm. But then Wednesday's that does kind of work. Okay, yeah, because now it's during the school, you won't ever have core anymore on Wednesdays. No. So if we do every other Wednesday, that probably would work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. well, it's easy for me. I mean, I if I'm subbing, I'm out I, by two on Wednesday. Okay. So that's easy to do that. Whereas okay. um, if I'm not subbing, well, then it don't matter. I'm, I don't have an issue, but 
Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not. I'm not planning on going anywhere f till f winter. Okay. I have some stuff coming up, but I'll be back by Wednesday's so always. Yeah, we well, gotta be if you're gonna be open. Yeah, because I'm going for a quilt retreat in November. Fun. Yeah, and then we have our retreat in January, but none of those are on a Wednesday. Right. They're on the weekends for like my quilt retreat is Saturday through Tuesday. Hmm. They did that for me because the store is closed. That's actually really nice of them. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, world, we're back. Okay. Nice, nice seeing to you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye.